basically, if he was going to turn in there, was <laughs> what is this guy doing? Hello everyone, Kirith here, and welcome to a baking hot Daytona for the Gran Turismo 7 World Series. It's going to be the best start you've ever seen in your life. No, it isn't. It's the worst start you've ever seen in your life this World Series race. The fire plane's going, we're not moving at all. So we get, whoa, it's already kicking off. There's a car on the infield. So this race is going to be really aggressive, but also quite a lot of fun. I was really enjoying driving this full Raptor F-150 pickup truck. Absolutely a joy to drive in the corners, weirdly. I was loving the amount of torque I was getting around the corners. Can really put the throttle down. And it accelerates so nicely. You can see it here, the Intash Horseshoe. Whoa, we get there. Whoa, it's two a civil war with the French. We'll use another driver. But this International Horseshoe that's happened here, you could really get the car rotated, get on the power, and it's a really nice exit. So weirdly, I was liking driving this pickup truck. This is a very Gran Turismo type race, isn't it? Pickup trucks in the online championship. But there we go. Uh, think about making a move up the inside here. We're going to go a little bit across country. Whoa, just about keep it in check. And we do get the move done. So we were in last place. We're now up to 12. Rom's got a five-second penalty. Mr. Smoke Too Much has got a three-second penalty. Fuchs has got a second penalty. So it's all kicking up on the penalty front. Um, as you try not to ram into the Frenchman here. We've just about avoided the penalty at the moment. But you can see contact penalties are live and well in Gran Turismo 7. Uh, they're being dished out liberally. So if you're a fan of the penalty system, then you'll be glad to know that it's working. As we're going to go now into the bus stop. Now, I, I need to give you some context here. I have no idea how the track limits work at the bus stop at Daytona in Gran Turismo Center. I've done this track a lot in iRacing. But it, in fact, let's go back. I want to show you qualifying. This was my experience in qualifying. So we're going through the bus stop. And I'm trying to hit track all the time. Make sure at least two of my wheels on the track at any one time. But we're going to get a penalty. And that's not unusual. As you can see here, another entry. Really trying to respect the track limits. Make sure I've always got wheels on the track. That surely should be the way. That must be a good lap through in qualifying. I was on a decent lap, I think. And it's another track limit penalty. And I go through again in qualifying. <laughs> I had a fun qualifying, as you can see. Again, you guessed it. We're going to get a track limit penalty. So I have no idea how the track limits work at day 10. So back to the race. I just wanted to avoid getting a track limit penalty. <laughs> Taking it very easy, very, very, very easy in third gear. Just trying to, please don't give me a penalty. And let's see what happens because it delays a little bit. But I think we're going to make it through without a penalty. So whatever we did this time worked. But this race is going to be critically important because the penalty line at Daytona is in such a brutal place. It's just coming up here. You're going to lose so much time uh, trying to get back up to top speed as it's going to be a queue of pickup trucks taking penalties. We're going to navigate our way through following the Portuguese driver. Uh, could try and go for a cheeky one up the inside here. And in fact, the Portuguese driver is going to do it himself. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> and oh no, we hit the tyres. We hit the tyres. Oh dear. So fair play to the Portuguese driver. I was thinking, can I do a double overtake? I love making double overtakes. Whether it's in karting in real life, whether it's in online racing on my PC, or on the PS5 or the Xbox. Double overtakes are just like, honestly, it's like doing stepovers in football or a roulette or something. It's just absolute peak skill. Love it. But we couldn't make it done. Instead, we hit the tyres. So pretty big fail there. We're going to keep on going now, following the Frenchman. We know we've got decent pace here. We just need to kind of stop these silly mistakes and definitely not get a penalty. Uh, tapping the Frenchman along here. Are we going to try and be a bit ruthless and go for the overtake? Let's see. Keeping our options open. Looks like we're going to go for it, if I know myself. Yes, we are. We're going to slot up the inside and uh, leave the space on the outside, but he's not there anyway. He was in the Toyota Tundra. There were two pickup trucks you could use this race. The Ford or the Toyota. I've gone in the Ford. And, okay, back on the straight now is the critical bus stop. Have a look at my line and let's play the game at home. Am I going to get a track limit penalty or not? <laughs> and let's see if we guess it right. Uh, the guy, the Frenchman is coming back at us here. Let's, let's see what he's going to do. I'm trying to squeeze him a little bit. Um, let's see what happens on the brakes. I think he's going to get there. So we'll just try and follow him through. So, a lot of space given there. A lot of space given there. A lot of space given there. And space given there. Surely that's not... So the Frenchman, I think, picked up a track limit penalty. Didn't he? So I didn't get one, but the Frenchman got one. So honestly, I have no idea. Obviously, when this track came up in the very first week of Gran Turismo 7 in Daily Race C, the track limits were completely exploitable, which was wrong. But they patched it by adding barriers everywhere. It's like Fortnite. 
Um, those barriers aren't there now, but I almost preferred the barriers because it's like, you knew if you didn't hit the barriers, you were okay. They, they really got to sort that out, I think. I'll try and make a video on it as well where I, I tell you exactly where the track limits are because I honestly, at the moment, when I was doing this race, I did not know. Catching up with a few other drivers, this is um, Isma. Now, this is going to be a bit controversial if I remember. Let's have a look. So looking up the inside, there's no space. There's no space, no space. But now there's definitely space. Go up the inside and there's con there's contact. So he spins out. I make contact with him. He spins out. I want you to let me know, honestly, what do you think about that move? So if I was defending myself, I would say the, mo the space was definitely there and I was alongside and he turned in. And basically, if he was going to turn in there, was <laughs> what is this guy doing? If he was going to turn in there, then there was always going to be an accident. Um, now, if I was going to be critical of myself, I'd say putting myself alongside that lay is a surprising move. And he's probably in the process of turning in already. I've surprised him. And basically, I'm going to fishtail him out. So let me know what you think about them. I love hearing the, the different opinions. And uh, sometimes we get a consensus, really. So we get to know what you think of that one. I didn't slow down because I thought at the time he turned in on me. So that's what I've raced on. So following this Portuguese driver again, Portugal doing quite well in this race up in P2 and in P7. Lap three, so it's going to be two laps to go when we gave us our finish line. Not the longest World Series race, this one. We're two seconds up on our previous lap, but we've got to get through the dreaded bus stop chicane. Let's see how we do. I'm taking it very gingerly. Oh, we cut quite a bit on the first one, I'd say. So we cut quite a bit on the first one. What's going to happen? Any penalty, any penalty, any penalty? No penalty. So maybe you can really cut the first one. And maybe it's one of the other corners that is when you shouldn't cut. So we're going to boost the Portuguese driver here. We've got two Frenchmen behind. Don't think I particularly made friends with either of them. So I'm going to strike up a temporary truce here with uh, with Portugal in the Nations Cup. And let's see what we do at Turn 1. I really want to try and go around the outside. And not, my favourite overtaking manoeuvre in all of motorsport is round the outside at Daytona Turn 1. I absolutely love it. Are we going to make it work? Ooh. It's going to be close. It's going to be close going to be close and oh we just squeeze them a little bit we do make it done yes i'm i'm not joking round the outside at daytona turn one in all of sim racing i would say some in real life there's some other tracks like uh, it feels a bit different in real life but in sim racing round the outside at daytona turn one is such a clutch move where you have to be so confident in your ability to outbreak and outmaneuver and get on the power without getting the oversteer and basically get alongside before the exit of the um of the kind of where the pit wall juts out so let me know again in the comments if you love that move as well because that is my favorite move to pull off and it's basically in defense if you can do it it's indefensible because normally the driver is going to try and cover the inside but there is space there on the outside so yeah absolutely classic corner well we're up into p7 now we just we just went purple so we definitely got the pace at this combination but obviously we had the start from hell uh, we were in the walls a little bit and we bottled quality multiple times for the track limits. Let's see what happens here. We play the track limits game at Daytona. Uh, we've definitely got a buffer behind. He's not going to make a move. Breaking between the two and the one where this little board is. Actually, a little bit later. Going to turn in. Definitely a lot of space given there. 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 Surely that is not going to be a penalty. Surely, 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 surely not. And it isn't. Okay, so we're learning. Right. This Bahamas guy in a very nice liveried um, Ford Raptor. Honestly, Grand Twitter 7 just looks and feels so good with road cars. I don't know what it is, but the road cars just look absolutely incredible. Um, I hope it's coming across. By the way, I have upgraded my equipment. So this is my first video using my new capture card. All the money that this channel makes from advertising, with very generous donations, memberships, goes back in the channel for equipment and software. And one of those things, this new fancy capture card. And it just captures the colours a little bit better, actually. I've able, been able to tweak the saturation, brightness, contrast. So let me know again if you can see see a difference. But so grateful to each and every one of you. Just watching the videos, honestly, just makes the world a difference. And, you know, my commitment is I invest everything back in the channel. And we just keep improving, hopefully. So falling Bahamas Racing, I'm going to be bumping along here because I sense that we can potentially make this a battle for P5 um, near the end of that. We've gone purple again. Are we going to go up the inside there? Yeah, betrayal. So we're going to slide up the inside. There's the Swiss driver. And yeah, probably a decent move because I think we can get ahead of the, uh, I was going to say American, but ahead of the Swedish driver. 
give him a decision to make about whether he bumps us. We put the ball in his court, but we're definitely kind of within slip territory of the Swiss driver. So it's all going to come down to the bus stop. So we go purple massively there. Almost a second purple is absolutely insane. I'm just not sure how that's worked out. By the way, I did have a race um, a couple of days ago where I'm a little bit suspect about the timings in Gran Turismo 7. I was uh, following a guy in quali, we were working together, and I didn't. I visibly did not catch up with him in the quali lap, but I gained half a second on him in quali, so the timing was a little bit weird there. I just want to look into that, make a video. A uh, bit of a drift on here, but it looks like we're okay through the chicane, so hopefully no penalty. As Oh no, we got the penalty. We got now, I reckon, so we've gone purple and got the penalty. We were definitely going to have an amazing run here for fifth, right? But it looks like we're going to lose everything. I think it was the last corner. I think it was the last bit of the chicane, but that is absolutely brutal. Dagger to the heart, that one. I mean, the race was going so well. We, we were in last place and we were going to have a run to the line for fifth. And now it's a very middling P7. So, oh man, these, these track limits, I really got to work out. I love that livery that Bahamas Racing. That is as American as you get. And that is what this pickup truck is all about. We're going to take over my P7. And this gave me some ideas. I wanted to do some practice. I wanted to do a better run. So we're going to do another run in this. I'll make another video. So look out for that. But make sure to like, subscribe, all of that good stuff if you're doing this video. Let me know how you race one as well. And I'll see you next time.